So in today's video, I'm diving back into what we will call the junkyard box. A buddy at work had gifted this to me and uh, got a lot of goodies in there, but we've found the perfect candidate right here. This is, I believe, pronounced Yatming. It's a Chevy Stepside. See right there. I believe they stopped making die cast about three or four years ago. I'm not sure. This is definitely a lot older than that. My buddy is 45, so he probably had this when he was, let's say, 10. So we'll say it's 35 years old, give or take. And given its age, it's actually in excellent shape. But these can be had very cheap on eBay. So we're going to go ahead and make a video of it. Now, I'll call this a restoration, even though it's technically a custom, because we're not going anywhere near stock. We do have two of them. The second one, the white one, is going to be a parts car. Basically, I need the windshield out of it. Everything else is pretty much junk. So we're going to take the white one first, and we're going to drill it out. We're going to start out with our center punch. And the reason why we do this is to get a reference point for the drill bit so it does not walk off. Now you'll notice I'm starting out with the 1 8 inch drill bit. I'm not going to use the .050 drill bit on this, the smaller one, because I'm not going to tap these screws out. I just want to get that base off so I can get that usable windshield out. You can see here the interior is useless. It's got a big crack in it. and I don't need it anyway. And that is the piece that I want, the windshield. Not perfect, but it doesn't have a crack like the blue one. Moving back to the blue one, start off with our center punch. And this one we will drill out. So we're starting at our 0 .050 drill bit. Then we will move to the 1 8 inch drill bit. And then back to the smaller drill bit. You can certainly either start with the large drill bit or use the small drill bit and end with the larger drill bit. But the problem with that is sometimes the drill bit will walk off a little bit when it gets past the mushroom part of the rivet and you'll drill through the side of the post. So I like to take my time and use both of them on and off. And you can see it just pops right off. This interior is in excellent shape, but the windshield does have a crack in the back, as mentioned before. Here's what we end up with. A nice interior from the blue one and a decent windshield from the white one. And here is the base of the blue one. It's actually in excellent shape, except for the rear bumper. You can see it is bent up we're going to go ahead and pop the wheels off. Now these wheels are held in by that plastic, which is similar to the springy suspension type feeling that you would find on a redline axle. Now we need to go ahead and take off that front grille. Now that is not metal. If you remember the white one is missing it, it's plastic. So we go side to side with a flathead screwdriver just to pry it out. And here is the body ready for the next step, which is finishing drilling out the posts with the .050 bit and then tapping them. You'll see I've got the bit angled a little bit just so I don't blow out the back side because it wasn't exactly centered. And after that we're going to flatten it out a little bit more with our file. Next we'll take our 256 tap to tap the hole that we drilled in preparation for the 256 button head screws, which are right here. And I will have links to all these parts below the video description, so check those out. Now you'll notice the back post here. See how much that screw is sticking out? I cannot drill in any further. If I do drill in further than it already is, I will go through the bed of the truck. We'll show you the fix for that later. But for now we're going to strip it with the citrus strip. Which this can take anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. This took about 5, the paint came off really easy. And next we're going to show you the paint we're going to use. A little bit different than most of my videos, we're actually using spray can. We've got our plastic coat primer, our perfect match paint right here, which is a cherry metallic, and then our perfect match clear. And unfortunately this paint was defective, and you'll see it here. It just kind of shot out in blobs. I ended up returning it when I took it to the auto parts store to return it, just to get the same exact thing. They looked at me like I was a criminal. But they did exchange it. And here's what you see here. And here it is after the clear coat and about 
four or five days of drying. So I had to paint this twice because of that defective paint, which kind of seems to be the norm around here. Now we're using our polishing compound and we're gonna polish up that paint a little bit more. I don't really like using spray cans. The airbrush is 20 times easier because you have so much control, but it turned out okay. And we're also gonna polish that windshield up just a little bit. Now it doesn't look great, but it's, it's acceptable. Now time to focus on that rear bumper. We're just gonna take our little brass hammer, which you can get at Harbor Freight. This happens to still be the magic hammer. You might even see the writing here and there. We're just flattening out that rear bumper as close as we can get it. And it doesn't look too bad. I was quite surprised. Now I've mentioned before, I like to do something different in every video. And this will be a little different for me. I do woodworking on the side, so I've got all the tools, I've got all the lumber I need. We're using some walnut right here and cutting it basically in half. We're resawing it, making it as thin as we can possibly get it because we're going to use it on this truck. And we're using our little hobby saw. This is mainly, I believe, for balsa wood, but it works fine for anything. And we're cutting it down to size. We're going to try to fit it in this truck. Obviously, I need to cut a little bit more. Then I resort to a little filing and finally a little sanding until we get the perfect fit. Now, my original plan was to actually cut these in small strips, but the amount of time and the mess gluing it in, I decided to just use a solid piece. Now, I can paint the lines on this if I wanted to to make it actually look like planking, but we went ahead and just glued it in as one solid piece of walnut. Now, keep in mind, this is not a veneer. This is not fake. This is actually walnut. This is a solid piece of walnut. So that's pretty cool to have a little small die cast car with a real piece of walnut in it. Now in this shot I'm attempting to show you the the finished paint because it's going to be better with this lighting just to see the reflection. It's not the best. I've done better with an airbrush but it's pretty good for a paint can. Now I'm going to go ahead and re-chrome the bumper on this. I did not strip it and paint the Chevy emblem yellow. Now I'm filing down the base for two reasons. One, the wheel wells on this car are very narrow, so there's not a lot of options. And the second reason is I don't have to make axles. I can use the axles from the Johnny Lightning wheels that I'm gonna use. Now you'll notice when I pop these wheels in, the front wheels do not have the plastic tab. It broke off, so I had to glue them in place, and I was afraid that was gonna happen, but I tried. We also paint the wings black, and then I'm going to cut that screw. That is that screw for the back that goes in the rear of the truck for the bed. I'm cutting it in half with a pair of cutters, wire cutters, side cuts, whatever you want to call them. And you can see here, it's probably a little less than half, so it's perfect. We'll go ahead and start reassembly. We'll start with the windshield, move on to the interior, put our base on. There's that screw. Go ahead and screw that in. Then our front screw and she's done and I absolutely love this truck I think it turned out really sweet as you can tell I did do a few things off camera I actually didn't realize my card was full so I painted the rear lights the tail lights red painted the door handles chrome painted the side markers there you can see in an orange the front turn signal is yellow, and I painted the headlights in like a gray. It may not show up well with that chrome, but in person you can see it. I would say it's one of my favorite custom slash restorations. I just really love the look of the truck. Now, I'm not 100% happy with the paint. If I had it to do over again, I would have actually sprayed that paint maybe in a cup and then used it in my airbrush, but it does look really good. It just could be a little better. That's what all of them can be a little better. None of them are perfect. My grandson's probably not going to get this one because I just like it too much. So it's going to stay in my collection. Now the original car wasn't that bad, but for me, this just took on a totally different transformation. We've done red lines that were totally beat up, but this does not look like the same truck. And trust me, I'm not tuning my own horn. I'm not one to do that. I think it's the wheels. I think the wheels just give it an entirely different look, even a different casting. It doesn't look like a Yatming, wherever that came from. Be sure to check out the links below the video description. 
I have links to all the tools that I use in the video. Everything from the rotating stand, to the screws, to the drill bits, to paint. All the various tools that I use in all the videos can be found in those links below the video description. And as always, thanks for watching.